that that consideration is as a result of a desire to put in place a war chest uh, to fight the next election. Uh, that's not in the best interest of Ireland. It's not in the best interest of the Shannon or the Cork regions who depend, all of them together with Dublin, depend so much on direct connectivity uh, into Heathrow Airport, not just for uh, providing access to that part of London, but to a wider network uh, of global cities. Um, that connectivity is important uh, in terms of attracting foreign investment and retaining foreign investment, uh, not just in Dublin, as I said, but in the Midwest and in the southern region. And it's vitally important as well to attract tourism to Ireland. Uh, it's a challenging time in, in the aviation sector, uh, but notwithstanding that, since privatisation, uh, Aer Lingus passenger numbers have grown by some 60% from about 7 to 11 million. Uh, it's been a success story. There is future potential for Aer Lingus to grow. Uh, last year, uh, routed through Dublin, uh, Aer Lingus carried about a million passengers for onward transit to the United States. Uh, it makes great sense for people in the north of England to hub through Dublin, have the customs and border protection pre-clearance carried out at Dublin and then onwards to domestic terminals in cities like Chicago, Boston and New York and further afield. As the Heathrow Airport is slash restricted, uh, there's clearly limited capacity there with greater demands. So there is potential for future growth through Dublin Airport uh, by, by Aer Lingus and other air, airlines servicing uh, the, the wider UK market. So it's not as if Aer Lingus needs an injection of capital at this stage. It's well capitalised, it's well funded. Uh, it has about 400, between three and 400 million uh, euros on its balance sheet. It's in a strong position uh, and in a position uh, to grow. We believe that Aer Lingus should, maintain an independent, should be maintained as an independent company um, and should be headquartered out of Ireland. And so it was a Fianna Fáil government that passed the legislation under which Aer Lingus can now be sold. In fact, when you were in the centre at the time, you welcomed it and you didn't seem to have any concerns at the time that there was any prospect of a threat to Shannon. You said you were happy with the strategy. So what's changed in the meantime? I welcomed the privatisation of Aer Lingus. And as I have said, uh, we have seen Aer Lingus grow from carrying uh, 7 million passengers then to 11 million passengers now. It has been a tremendous success. It's now a strong company. As you know, while it remained in state ownership, uh, it went through various different cycles of, of rescue, almost on the uh, position of bust on a number of occasions. So that has been a wonderful success. I was demanding at the time, as, uh, as others were, that the state would retain a strategic interest in the company, and it did so uh, by retaining that 25% interest. It allowed the, uh, the state to appoint directors to the board so that uh, they could participate in the strategic direction of the company and ensure that uh, the airline would be in a position uh, to block any hostile takeover, uh, as I think the government should exercise their share to do that now and protect Aer Lingus uh, for the benefit uh, of the Irish people. Uh, I, I fully stand over the decisions at the time and I believe they were the right ones. And I believe the safeguards that were put in place at the time, if exercised now, uh, would ensure uh, that Aer Lingus continues to be a strategic asset for the benefit of the tourism and business interests of this state.